to Knowledge NAS, and we'll start by going to PhotoPRISM's website, which is just photoprism.app. Then I'm going to click on Docs, and in the left-hand side, you see a section called Docker Compose. I'll click Docker Compose, and then not too far down, make sure you're in the Linux section for configure, it says download our docker compose.yaml example. So I will do that and ignore the rest of the instructions because I was not a good student in school. And then I will just need all of this, so I'll just select it all and hit copy. If it happens to actually download, you can open this file up in any text editor and you should be able to just copy all of this text. And now let's go back to the Synology NAS. So we need Container Manager, which if you don't have, you can just pick it up in the Package Center and type in Container Manager. Well, wow, it's pretty far off and I still got it. Pretty good. Then click Container Manager, install it. If it's not showing up for you, that means your Synology does not officially support Container Manager, but it's probably worth Googling and seeing if people were, get, were able to get it to install anyways. So good luck if that is you. So I'm going to click on Container Manager and you don't need to do this. I don't usually do this, but I do for the bigger projects. So I'm going to click on Registry and I'm going to type in Photo Prism, all one word. And the very first one that shows up is PhotoPRISM dash PhotoPRISM. And I am just going to right click and download this item and it will give me options. And I just want whatever the latest version is and I will click apply. PhotoPRISM is pretty big, so that's going to download in the background. If you didn't do that, if you skipped, probably not going to make a big difference here. So now I'm going to click on project and then click create. Actually, I'm going to exit out because I need to scoot you over because I'll need file station. So now I'm in project. I'm going to click create. I have no projects, even though I've done this six times. Let's do a project name. So the project name is going to just be photo prism, one word as it is officially on their website. And then for path, let's create a path. So we'll go into file station. You should have a share called Docker. I think it gets created automatically when you install container manager. So I'll create a folder and I'll just call this photo prism. Click OK. And then I'm going to scoot you over to the left because I'm going to have to come back to you a couple of times. So I'll go back to Docker container under path, set path, Docker, photo prism. And then for source, instead of upload Docker compose, I'm actually going to click on that and click create Docker compose. And now I'll just paste all that text from the Docker compose file that I got before that was on photo prism's website, this Docker compose.yaml file here. Just need to make a couple of changes. So I'm going to scroll down to a section. You can see services photo prism. That's where I want to be at first. Section called environment. Under environment, I'm going to change the admin username. You can change it to whatever you want. I use my legal birth name, which is volume data 21. You don't know if it's that any different than that or not. And then photo prism admin password, insecure. Um, I'm just going to make up a password. And then for photo prism auth mode, it says password. That is not a password for you to change. That is a mode that it is setting. If you look to the right of all of these variables. Actually, throughout this whole document, you'll see these uh, pound signs or hashtags, and they're a little bit grayed out. That just means that they're notes. So you can read these notes and that can help you out a lot. But for example, here it says auth authentication with public or password. I'm going to keep password, but if you didn't ever want to log in with a password, you could just type in public. And that might be fine and totally safe for you. That is your decision. And then I am going to scroll down to the bottom of environments. There are these database environmental variables. And there's one for passwords. So PhotoPRISM database password. It says insecure. Typically when it says insecure, I think that means it wants me to change it to a different password. So there we go. That looks pretty secure to me. I'm just going to copy that. So I'm going to put PhotoPRISM as one of the more, I'm going to say intermediate Docker Compose projects that I've done here so far. Um, this might be the first, uh, I guess image has a database too, but I put image in there too. Project with databases with the password, that typically means you have to put it in two spots and it's the same password. So one is in the project. So in this service, it's photo prism, which if I scroll back up, nope, just a little bit further down, you can see we're still in the services photo prism thing. Hey, photo prism successfully downloaded. Cool. So if I scroll down, there's another one for the database and it's MariaDB. And I know that it's a service because it's got the image right underneath it, which is, it's going to download a database called MariaDB. And then if I scroll down, environment here, there is MariaDB password. I'm going to change that to be the exact same as the PhotoPRISM database password from above. And then where it says root password and secure, I can make that whatever I want. And that's fine. So now let's scroll back up. It's not cool. I don't know why I said cool. It's, it's normal. Normal. Scroll back up and I want to, actually, I don't need to make any other changes. No, that's a lie. I do need to make another change. I'm going to look for volumes. So volumes in Docker Compose are Docker's way of pointing to folders. And we're in a photo app, so we're probably going to want to point to a folder with photos or a place that we just want to save photos. You might be starting from scratch. 
So we can see here that there are first volume section here. We've got two that we can see here, two that are in red. So the first one says tilde dash pictures colon. I'm just gonna change what's to the left of here. So you can read the instructions to the right, original media files, do not remove. That's, I feel like that's a little ambiguous, but if I were you, point this to a folder on Synology NAS that maybe doesn't have any photos or has just got a couple photos. Probably get a feel for Photo Prism before you start pointing it to your entire photo library, but I have one. So I'm gonna to go to File Station and in my Docker share, I have a folder called Photos, which may or may not have photos. I'm gonna right click that, click on Properties and I'm gonna copy the location and then I'll exit out of there. And I'm gonna come back here. And I'm gonna replace all the way from the tilde. The tilde is actually just a shortcut. It's a shortcut for a home folder. As you can read up here, it actually tell you what some of the stuff is. So I can erase that tilde. I'm gonna go all the way up to the colon. I'm not gonna delete the colon, but I will just paste in that folder for my photos. And yeah, so now it's gonna point there and that's where it's gonna, that's where it's gonna save photos and it's gonna look for photos in that folder. And then I'm gonna scroll down. I need a couple of other volumes. So it needs a storage volume. <coughs> Sorry, still shaking off a cough. So this period, as you can read up here, it's a shortcut for, period is a shortcut for the current directory. And this is true of all Docker containers. I think it's a Linux thing actually, but period storage. So the folder that this in, it's the one that we created, right? Up here path, Docker photo prism. So I can just go in here, Docker photo prism and create a folder called storage. If you don't, it'll give you an error and you will have to fix it. All right. And then we need, there's a couple more volumes in here. So storage, MariaDB needs one or two also. MariaDB needs a database one. I'm gonna show you what happens if you forget, just so you can kind of read the error if it ever pops up to you in, in the end. So got all that set. That should be all that we need. I'm gonna click next, not gonna set up a web station and then start the project once it's created. And this should hopefully be quick since we downloaded Photo Prism already. What I did not do was download MariaDB, which uh, might be a little bit bigger than I thought. So maybe this still will take a minute. And there we go. So everything's done. And you can see we get this error, bind mount failed. Volume two Docker Photo Prism database. So that means it is looking for this folder and it cannot find it. So exit code one, I'm gonna close out of here. I'll just go to that folder, create a folder called database, Docker Photo Prism database, which is what it was missing. So now if I'm back in container manager, I'll click project, right click build, and hey, it worked. Exit code zero is good. Photo Prism was successfully built. <clears throat> and if I left, if I click here on the left tab, I can see container, we've got our database, Photo Prism Maria DB, and then the Photo Prism container, which is just Photo Prism dash Photo Prism. This is also where you would update these containers. So if there's ever a Photo Prism update, just click on container and there should be a button that says, hey, I'm ready to be updated. All right, but now the important part is how do we get to Photo Prism? If we go back to project, double click Photo Prism, YAML configurations. You remember this guy, we were just here. There's a section under Photo Prism called ports. We're not trying to get into the database, so we're not gonna worry about th those ports. We're gonna come down here and we'll see ports, two, three, four, two. We only care about the one on the left. The one on the right side is for, that's for Docker. That's its own thing. In this case, they're the same. It's not uncommon for them to be different though, but we just want the one on the left. So what this is saying is, hey, in order to access my service, you need to go to the IP address of whatever device I'm installed on, colon 2342. It's installed on our Synology NAS, so we need the Synology's IP address, which if you don't know your Synology NAS's IP address, you can just come up here to the right, top right under widgets, you should have a section called System Health, which if you don't, just click the plus and you have System Health, and you'll see your IP address. In my case, mine is 192.168.8670. <clears throat> um, yours will be different. Yours is probably 192.168.1. something. So now I'm just gonna go to 192.168.86.70 colon 2342. And hey, we're in, we're in Photo Prism. So if this isn't working for you, a couple things you can check. One, make sure that you're not typing in HTTPS. You have to type in HTTP colon slash slash IP address of your NAS colon 2342. I know it's very catchy. And then also make sure that if you're using a Synology firewall, you have to make sure that you can access port 2342 on there. And you're probably not running into this, but just know this, you cannot access this outside of your home network. So if you're at the local coffee shop or at work or using someone else's Wi-Fi, that IP address is not gonna work. You're gonna have to figure out how to do it via a VPN or reverse proxy, which would take too long for me to go over in this very long tutorial already. So I'm just gonna log in. I'll use my volume data 21 username and the password. I don't remember what it is. So I'll just go back to that YAML file <clears throat> and copy it. So my Photo Prism admin password and paste. Check it out. You're in Photo Prism. You got your very own photo app. 
I mean, you've already got Synology Photos, which is, you know, probably as good or better or worse. I don't know. But you've got it. And you can mess around with this and have some fun. If you pointed it at a folder that already has photos, you can go to Library and start scanning. And it's going to pick up on all your incredible photos that you put in that folder that aren't just more Dragon Con photos. Oh, that's spoiler. Yep, it is, it is from Dragon Con. I lied. I only have photos from Dragon Con parades. And they are going to show up here in this section that's called Search. I already got two. Look at that T-Rex. Pretty cool. <clears throat> so that's, you've got Photo Prism installed. You've got a pretty decent idea how to use it. The Photo Prism website is going to be a really good guide for you. It might not answer everything, but at least it gives you a starting point of questions to ask. For example, Photo Prism actually also supports Intel QuickSync Video. So if you've got some larger videos on your Synology NAS and you have an Intel Synology NAS, it can actually transcode video for you, which might be helpful. You can also add in additional directories. And this is going to be a decent spot to look that up. I know if you're just getting started in Docker and you don't know much about Linux, it's a little bit tricky, but it's a decent starting point. I will, however, very stupidly, because I'm not great at this, but I will, well, I, I somewhat know what I'm doing. That's how I would describe myself. I somewhat know what's going on here. Let's see if we can edit this YAML configuration a little bit. So I'll come back here. I'm in Container Manager. Well, let me close out, so I'll start fresh. Container Manager, Project, I'm going to double-click Photo Prism, and I'm going to hit Stop in the upper right-hand side. Stop, Exit Code 0, that's good. I'm going to close out, <clears throat> and then go to YAML Configurations, and I can edit some of these YAML properties. So let's say you wanted to add in another folder. Maybe you've got two folders of photos on your Synology NAS, which would be incredible. That's so many folders. Um, I'm going to scroll down to that volume section again, and it's got notes here, right? So additional media folders can be mounted like this. And you can see here, they've got a folder called family. This is one of those rare case, no, I shouldn't say rare, but one of those instances where we can now start messing with stuff to the right of the colon. So I am going to get rid of this pound sign and make sure that the, this section lines up with the section above and which, with the section above it, any active sections. So now it's active. The, the pound sign space means, it's basically, they call it, um, ba, 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 what do they call it? Commenting out? Something like that. But anyways, once I get rid of that, this is now active. So what Photo Prism is now doing is it's going to look for a folder called forward slash example forward slash family. Um, make this whatever you want. Let's say you do have a folder called forward slash. I'm going to change this to um, ba -ba -ba events. So you have on your Synology NAS, it would actually be volume. You'd probably have it in volume one or volume two. So it'd be volume one slash events. You have a folder in there that's got a bunch of event photos. To the left of the colon, that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put the, that folder location to the left of the colon. To the right, I'm going to keep it where it says Photo Prism Originals, but forward slash, I can change that to whatever I want. So I can type in events. And now, when I'm in Photo Prism, it'll be able to find a folder called events. And if you wanted to create additional ones, you could just copy this line and then hit return and paste it. You see you're getting errors, sequence errors, and incorrect typing stuff. Um, just make sure that it kind of looked like it did before. So there was not an empty line here, so I'll get rid of that. And this hyphen needs to line up with the other hyphen. And look at that. It even It's so kind. It says we have duplicate items. So maybe we've got another one called, instead of events, we'll call it parades. Because you only go to Dragon Con every year and take photos. Okay. Parades. So that would be your way of adding in additional folders if you needed to. If you wanted to do quick sync video, oh boy, this is getting longer than I wanted to, but we actually need to uncomment the section that says devices because you want to start using a device. So I'm going to uncomment out devices. This is right above there. I'm going to come down to where it says dev DRI, dev DRI. You can see the comment where it says Intel quick sync video and uncomment you out and we're good. The other change that you would need to make though is you need to tell Photo Prism under, there's a section right here for video transcoding. They have a whole section dedicated to it. You can go to this URL here and check it out. But I'm going to uncomment out for the FFmpeg encoder. And now it says software. I'm going to type in Intel. And if you're wondering how I knew how to type in Intel, I can just look to the right. It's got the notes. So I can either use software, Intel, NVIDIA, Apple, Raspberry, or Vapi. And I can even change the FFmpeg size. All I have to do is uncomment out the size, and I can change the bit rate. And I'm set. <clears throat> so. There you go. Mess around with it. Have some fun. Hopefully this helps you figure out how to mess with things a little bit. It doesn't follow a lot of these Linux guides exactly. For example, you'll never have to type in docker compose up minus D. 
That is if you're using command line on a actual Linux box. And of course I can't find it on here, but stuff like that in the guide. Anyways, hopefully this helps you out. Have some fun with Photo Prism. It's an awesome app. It's a really cool way to browse photos and a lot of people use it. I would love for them to add a mobile app one day because it would really, it'd really be powerful. It'd be really cool to use it that way. But yeah.